what I set out to do, I mean, my early conversations, I mean, I came at this as an artist, and my early conversations with the scientists, the climate scientists, you know, 12, 13 years ago, was that they, they knew that there was a serious problem, that the climate change would affect society in a, in a grand way, grand scheme, but they weren't communicating this to the public. So the basic endeavor of the Cape Farewell Project was to find a different language of communicating with the wider public um, so that it wouldn't just be in terms of science, in terms of graphs and data and scientific information, but it would be a way of engaging the public to get them entranced with storytelling, with films, with music, and actually get them on board so that they say, okay, this is a reality and then try and get the audience to engage. So Cape Farewell is trying to do that. How we do, do that is a complicated story, but that's the endeavor. Now, how does a piece of art affect you? So you, you, how do you measure it? So obviously we're, we're, we're working very hard. We want to quantify what we do all the time, but it's an imprecise science. You know, in a way, the science of a climate scientist will say, well, that glacier has disappeared by 10 feet over a period of time, and an art will will say, well, I think I've engaged people and emotionally changed them. And so it's very difficult to be precise about uh, measurement in that sense. What has happened, and this is, I mean, I'm speaking from the UK, is that you know, 12 years ago, nobody was talking about climate change. Now, everybody knows what it is. Um, some people are denying it for odd sorts of reasons. But you know the knowledge is there. They know it's the situation. They're observing it. So, whether that's come back through media or politics or good science or through us, um, the, you know the whole art engagement program. I, I think that that's up for debate. But who who has achieved that kind of step change? And then, okay, people are now engaged. They know climate change is a reality. The big challenge now is what to do about it. And I think that to most people is daunting. They, they, they need leadership in it. So the Cape Farewell project now has moved from the scientific debate in many ways to saying, well, okay, what can we do? Where are the solutions? Where are the creative solutions? So, you know, in our own process of evaluation, that's the, the journey we've taken. But at the same time, you know, you're trying to take a huge population with you to inspire them, and that's part of the process. Most of the UK British public now accept the climate change is reality and they're actually encouraging the government to invest in new alternative energy sources. Now if you go to the United States or you go to other parts of Europe then this hasn't happened yet, this process hasn't happened and I think so the success in the UK and in Germany for example you know is this long-term cultural engagement and I think that so therefore you can measure it in those terms. We know that the solution to climate change is to change urban, you know, the way we live in these huge cities that we live in. So our engagement primarily now is working with cities, working with the whole populations and making artworks that actually engage people in and around um, the cities and places in which we live. Second to that, though, is that we're now international. I mean, I mentioned the United States, Canada. Um, climate change doesn't respect country's borders. You know, it's not about an English situation or an Italian situation or an American situation. This is about a global situation and how do you engage the whole planet in this conversation. So, it, you know, we've done all the kind of research and development in the UK and finding a way to engage publics, but how can you make that an export? How can you make this work within the United States or Beijing and, or Moscow? So that's the process we're in at the moment. I think one of the unique things about going up to the Arctic, for example, or even to the Andes, is that we've always worked with scientists. And what is interesting about the scientists is that you very rarely see them working in the field. You know, you, you see scientists in their labs, but you don't see how they get the information. And if you work with oceanographers, somebody actually has to go out there and sit in the middle of the northern, you know, Arctic frozen ocean and put it you know, a test over the side of the boat to measure what's happening to the water and what's happening to the deep water. So when we have the expeditions, we always have scientists on board and they're always working in the field. So then the artists or the writers see and observe how a scientist works. And then the conversation is, okay, how are you trying to find information? 
how does that then inform you know the conclusions you make if you look at the scientific process and then a scientist will say well I think this ocean is going to behave like this you know I make this projection that I you know the water goes up and it sinks why does it sink I need to study that so they make a projection of an idea they then go out and test it so they're then taking measurements to prove their idea when if you think of an artist an artist will say well wait a minute I've got this glimmer right out here for an artwork you know I'm trying to craft a book I'm trying and it starts with a little idea and then you go through the whole process of making and working and, and struggling and writing or painting and, to actually achieve the, the process of actually an artwork and the two are incredibly similar and that's really really exciting and I think both the scientists and the artists have suddenly go wait a minute you know our worlds are two very big intellectual inquiries that are not a lot different in practice the result is different I mean it's really funny when we're up in the Arctic you know you have the biggest landscape the most beautiful landscape on the anywhere you know it's very very addictive and the scientists will be going smaller and smaller and smaller. So they're looking at looking microorganisms in order to understand the situation. And the artists are going, wow, this is so big, it's wonderful. So they're going on the opposite end of the scale. So trying to get the two scales to talk together is, is what happens. The scientists knew that they had a problem communicating. They also knew they had something really important to say. So I, they, they, when we, I suggested getting the, the creative teams on board, what they thought they would do was illustrate what the scientific problems were or the scientific conversation was. Now, they soon realized that when you people, you know, great artists like Andy and Gorman or writers like Ian McEwan, they don't illustrate. What they do is they take all of the information on board and recraft it as an artwork in some sense or a novel. So the scientists went, oh, wait a minute, you know, what I've got to do is pump this person full of information, my world. I've got to show, open up the doors to my world and just trust the process that that person will then take that information and, and make it legible to the wider public. So that conversation has been fantastic and very, very interesting. They were very skeptical at first. I mean, the scientists were going, well, wait a minute, what is all this about? You know, I just don't understand. There were one or two who really get, got it from the beginning or were so frustrated that they weren't doing their job correctly in terms of communication. They thought, well, well let's risk it, let's just try this. And I, the success, I mean, when I started the project, I thought I'd go up to the Arctic maybe two times and that would be it. And we've been up there eight, nine times now, you know. So that I was as surprised at the success of the process as the scientists. One of the things about climate change is this is about engaging with the public as it is about understanding what's happening to our planet. So I think over the process of the last eight, ten years, scientists have become much more articulate about telling their story to media. There are certain scientists out there that are so articulate about trying to get their messaging across and finding new ways to do it. So it's not only working through the arts that they can do it, they've actually you know, engaged in that process themselves. I mean, I always say one of the good things about climate change is that it's, you know, it's changed the whole dynamic of what a, being a scientist is in many ways. And that, that's good. They, you know, they, they've engaged with society kind of activity, not just the specialist activity of, of them looking at their research. They've become human figures in that sense. At some point, society is going to have to change. I mean, I think this climate, you know, the, the effects of weather patterns changing now are going to get a lot more serious and I think the time frame is not 40 or 50 years in the future. I think the time frame is probably 5 to 10 years in the future. And I think society is going to have to reform itself in a very, very short period of time. And it's going to be a huge challenge and it's going to be non-negotiable. So in a way, it's got to happen, so that's optimistic. It's really sad that we're not doing it in a really measured and planned way because the damage is going to be much stronger to people's lives.